Hi, in this video, we're going to introduce recursion. So what is recursion? Recursion is one of the big ideas in computer science. And at a high level, what recursion is, is when a method calls itself. That's recursion. So what does recursion look like? Uh, you may be familiar with the Russian Matryoshka dolls, where you have a doll, and then you open that doll, and in the middle is a smaller doll that's the same, and you open that doll, and in that doll is a smaller doll, you open that doll, and there's a smaller doll. That's kind of what recursion looks like. It's sort of, you have one thing, and then you keep making it smaller, and keep getting the same thing all the way down. And so, there's lots of different analogies to recursion, but you often see that you have a big problem, and then you keep breaking it down into smaller problems that look similar, all the way down to the smallest little doll. So the idea in recursion is that we are breaking the problem down into similar subproblems of the same form. This is a key idea in recursion, so I'll repeat it again. In recursion, we are breaking the problem down into similar subproblems of the same form. So let's break, look at all those parts. The, you have a big problem and you're, you're trying to get it to smaller problems. Those are the subproblems, but they have to be of a similar format so you can use the same method to solve them. So that's the idea of recursion. And then at some point, the problems get so small that they're really easy to solve. So what are the parts of a recursive method? There's the base case, and then there's the recursive case. The base case is the simplest form of the recursive problem. This is the condition that causes the method to end. And if we don't have a base case, the recursion would just go on forever. The recursive case is the steps that an algorithm takes to make the problem one step smaller and move towards the base case. And if the recursive case doesn't make the problem smaller or simpler, the recursion would just go on forever. So you need both parts whenever you're doing recursion, the recursive case and the base case. So let's start with factorial um, and look at the iterative solution. So we start with uh, result equals one and then for i is one up to and including n, we multiply by i. So that's how you get factorial of n, you know, factorial of three is three times two times one. You know, that's, that's factorial. But there's also a recursive version of factorial. So the question is, how could you define factorial in terms of itself? So what does n factorial look like? Well, uh, the answer to n factorial is one, if n is equal to zero, and if n is not zero, well, what that really is, is it's n times n minus one factorial. So you can see that we have a definition of factorial that includes another call to factorial. So writing that in another way, uh, that means factorial of zero is equal to one, and factorial of n equals n times factorial of n minus one. You can already see the recursion there because a method is including a call to itself. So let's dive into the parts. First, the base case. So here are the two, two parts we had. Which of these is the base case? Well, the base case is factorial of zero equals one. This is the simplest form of the problem and we already have the answer, right? We already have the answer. So other things can build on top of this. So which of these is the recursive case? The recursive case is factorial of n equals n times factorial of n minus one. So this helps define the larger problem in terms of the smaller subproblem. So what does recursive factorial look like? Well, this is what it looks like. We start with the base case. If n is equal equal to zero, then we return one. Otherwise, we return n times factorial of n minus one. And that's it, it just works. And it's a little bit confusing, but we'll talk a little bit more but how you can think about it. So there's this idea called the recursive leap of faith. And recursion problems can be hard to think through, especially if you start to trace complicated problems. And there's an idea called the recursive leap of faith, which means the best way to think about recursion is just to assume that it works. And if the recursion works, if the smaller subproblem gets solved, then you just need to think about that small step to get from the current problem to the small subproblem. So it's a similar argument to mathematical induction, but if you can understand the recursive leap of faith, then what you really do is you can say, does my base case work? And does my recursive case work? 
And then you don't have to think about tracing it all the way down. Sometimes that's helpful to do to understand the problems, especially with simpler methods. But as you go on, this will let you tackle more complicated recursive problems. Okay, so now let's look at the Fibonacci sequence. So the Fibonacci sequence is where you add up the two previous numbers to get the next number. So the sequence looks like 1, 1, 2, 3, 5, 8, 13, 21, etc. So you can see fib of 0 equals 1, fib of 1 equals 1, and fib of n equals fib of n minus 1 plus fib of n minus 2. You can see Fibonacci is defined in terms of itself. Fibonacci of a number is the sum of the two previous numbers. So you can see how we might write this recursively. What's the base case? Well, um, if n is 0 or 1, then Fibonacci of that is 1. So there you go, you can see we have the code for that as well. And here's the recursive case, um, which says that Fibonacci of n is Fibonacci of n minus 1 plus Fibonacci of n minus 2. And there's the code, it looks very similar. So here's putting them together, what does that method look like? There you go, you can see private int Fibonacci int x, if x is 0 or x is 1, return 1. Otherwise, return Fibonacci of x minus 1 plus Fibonacci of x minus 2. So you can try this at home. If you go to Google and search recursion, what do you find? So you'll find something fun. Um, you can try that later. Um, and now we're going to go into the editor and write some of these problems. Okay, so first we're going to write our factorial method recursively. So we'll say private int factorial int x. Okay, so what's our base case? Our base case is if x is equal to zero, then we return one. And then we have our recursive case, which is we return x times factorial of x minus 1. So why is this working? We have a base case, and then here we're making the problem one step smaller. If we assume that we have the answer of factorial of x minus 1, all we need to do to get factorial of x is just multiply by x. Now we can test this out in our run method. So we'll say for int i equals 0, i is less than 8 i plus plus, and we'll print out factorial of i. So there you go. Now we also have a unit test program that we've created, uh, and you can see um, we have an answer here. Um, and if you run this code, you can see just the same thing working, but with uh, unit test results, so in a different format that you can play around with. Okay, now let's go and write Fibonacci. So, we'll start by saying private int Fibonacci of int x. So we say, if x equals 0 or x equals 1, return 1. So that is our base case. And then the recursive case is to get a Fibonacci number, we add the two previous Fibonacci numbers. So we say return Fibonacci of x minus 1 plus Fibonacci of x minus 2. So let's try printing out the first 10 Fibonacci numbers. Okay, oops, I printed out I, should have printed out Fibonacci of I. Great, so there you can see it. We have our Fibonacci sequence using our recursive method. So that's an introduction to recursion, and now you can try it out on your own.